Anthony with Kiteboarding St. Petersburg and it has been two weeks since I've had ACL reconstruction surgery. What are we doing? Waiting to get my ACL done. So how did I tear my ACL while kiteboarding? The day I went out, the winds were about 15 miles per hour and I had rigged a 12 meter kite, which would be the appropriate size kite for my weight. While I was riding, the winds had increased to about 30 miles per hour, therefore pushing those upper end limits of the kite. I had continued doing unhooked handle passes. Uh, one of those tricks I had landed, and I believe reflecting back on it, that my leg, my back leg was very straight. So upon impact, um, I heard a pop, and my entire leg gave out, therefore causing me to then crash. And all I could do was do my safety release and a few nice people took me off the water. So here we go. I'm all prepped. Which leg are we down, hon? Take a peek under the carpet. <laughs> Phase two, funny gas and nerve blockers have been inserted into my knee. Yeah, it was a whole process. Inserted. Just got back. Out of surgery. It's pretty brutal. <laughs> Even with pain medicine, it's a pretty good amount of pain. Don't tear your ACL. Lucas thinks it's funny. The best part is coming home to this guy. Oh, I meant Grandpa. Lucas. Lucas too. Lucas. What's Daddy doing? And Mama. Daddy's never doing this again, buddy. Daddy says you're gonna live in a bubble. You can't, yeah, can't put your weight on that. No. No. Okay. Don't be too young over. So this video is going to cover my experience over the two weeks and uh, my rehabilitation. I'm going to include what I've learned from the surgeon, physical therapist, and through reading uh, scientific studies on this. What I've learned is that there's not one approach that best suits everybody. There's a lot of information out there. Uh, but I'm going to talk about the latest trends for rehabilitation for that first phase after ACL reconstruction surgery. A nice study from Badawi and others that I'll include again in the description below uh, summarize this in for five key components in that first phase. So one being to reduce joint effusion. Basically, it's getting that swelling down. So it's being able to ice ice that knee almost every hour. So I was pretty religious with this over the course of the first couple of days. Uh, and then after that, it was once every hour and a half, two hours. But again, the number one thing I would say over the first two weeks was icing my knee and getting that joint effusion down. Number two is restoring volitional quadricep contraction so it's being able to squeeze and tighten your quadricep muscles. So before I went in for surgery, I did a lot of prehab, which consisted of uh, building up the strength in my quadriceps so that I wasn't going to lose a lot in those first two weeks. Definitely lose it quick, but again, trying to at least squeeze those muscles and activate your quadricep muscles. Three, progressing range of motion. So the first two weeks, I was told by my surgeon to keep my leg locked in a brace. Uh, that, of course, limited my range of motion. And all I did was try and work on getting my leg straight. My physical therapist also, uh, the first thing he's done is trying to get my leg to be completely straight. Uh, that is one thing I'm continuing to work on and increase my range of motion. This is something that I would recommend anybody work with a physical therapist with, it is quite interesting. Number four is restoring basic lower extremity function. 
So this consisted of just getting feeling in my toes back, being able to move my toes and my foot uh, appropriately again. The surgeon recommended that I use crutches and put weight on as tolerated. So I definitely took my time and tried to do things appropriately. So when I did put weight on it, I progressively worked my way up. Same thing towards walking. You want it, and this is what I've learned from my physical therapist, is to walk appropriately. It's not necessarily a race to the finish, but it's a marathon, and you want to be able to do the things the right way, such as being able to walk appropriately. Even if you're using crutches to do that, just take your time and be able to do things the correct way. Number five is to protect the surgical repair. So for the first three days, at least this is what my surgeon told me, I was not allowed to shower. And when I was, uh, I used a trash bag with duct tape to keep the brace and the initial um, bandages dry. But when I replaced the bandages, I had a blister that formed underneath and it took quite a bit of skin out so this added to the pain over the next several days actually the blister was more painful than the actual like surgery itself but one recommendation I was told is to keep that skin dry so on top of icing I was also keeping I was airing out um, where I had lost skin from the blister uh, to try and dry it out and get skin to grow back over. Apparently that is a common thing. Uh, so best recommendation is to really take care of that surgical repair. After two weeks, um, everything is looking quite good. The physical therapist looked at um, my wound and healing up pretty quickly. So soon enough, I'll be able to submerge it, which will allow for pool therapy that I'm very excited about. Additional things for over the past two weeks was that the initial pain lasted for about 48 hours and then improved substantially. Um, everything else feels normal. Feels like it's on track to getting to a better place. Uh, I had for seven weeks, I had no ACL and I felt like I had plateaued in my range of motion, the strength, my pain on a day-to-day -day, uh, two weeks after surgery and I already feel improvements from that initial um, injury so highly recommend surgery so far stay tuned for another video on rehab over the next few weeks physical therapy trying to build strength and range of motion is my next goal